All right. There we go. <laughs> on this Valentine's Day, that's why I have my red on and Danny has her red dress on. Tell us a little about, you know, maybe your partner and why you decided to, uh, you know, go in this endeavor together called marriage. Oh, got, yeah. called marriage. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, that's a good question. 20, 24 yeah. years ago, we met, uh, we fell in love instantly. She told her secretary, she was going to marry this guy after our first date. I wow. Fell for her. She's a closer. It's been a, yeah, closing since 24 years ago. Wow. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. What's your side of the story? Uh, yeah, what's your side of the story, Danny? <laughs> I think he told us your side, too. It's, it's actually, he told it very well. Just watch the movie When Harry Met Sally. I'll take care of it. Oh. We, uh, yep. I okay. knew he was the one right away. I really did. Right. I, my favorite scene is when she says, I'll have what she's having in the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be here all week. All right. Well, t tell us a little about like, because you guys are, you know, you're an awesome husband and wife team. I mean, you cl climb the ranks. I know you're in the, geez, uh, last time I checked, you guys were close to the top 10 for all agents in Arizona as a team. So um, tell us how, it, how is it working together as a husband and wife team? It's got to be interesting and, and so forth, right? Roses, uh, unicorns, and uh, rainbows every day. Um, you know, Andy, listen to that. Any, she tells go on, me what go to go on. Go on. <laughs> she tells me what to do, and I say yes, honey. It's that simple. <laughs> Next question. Okay, so that's so that's just marriage. A lot of chocolate, um, mm -hmm. a lot of saying thank you, a lot of forgiveness, and uh, how would you how, and patience? A lot of patience. So anyone going out there and working with their spouse. We feel you. We understand you. Um, it's the best thing ever, really, for us. It is a great fit. Uh, what else could you say? That's it. That's, that's it. You're yeah, doing okay. It, yeah. You're doing okay. You know, you guys are doing fabulous together. Tell, tell us a little. Danny, how about you? Anything you want to add to that? <laughs> nope. Wow. Okay. Wow. It, it, so chocolate, rainbows, unicorns and all that good stuff. Wow, you are one hell of a guy, Rob. But I already knew that, but now it's been confirmed. <laughs> all right, well, how about, you know, a little of the complexities. Like, you guys, um, you know, what, what, before we do that, how about your backgrounds? Like, what do you guys, what did you guys do before real estate? Yes, everyone's got a backstory, right? So I was a uh, former high school science teacher and uh, came out from New York to Arizona as a science teacher in 03. Um, what got me into real estate was an investment property. And I worked with another teacher who was, had his license and I really liked the process, uh, thought it was great. It was a really nice fit for me. Um, just with the education background, be, being able to explain the process, I loved everything about it. So I said, I'm going to get my license. So what I learned from that was. I can do this. And uh, in 04, I got my license. And then Danny, I needed the help because, you know, as a teacher, you're at school Monday through Friday, you're meeting people on weekends. I really needed a right hand man or woman to help me out. So <laughs> she got her license in, in 10. And then I, we were getting so busy. I, I really just wanted to make the leap uh, in order to service my clients and and just take it on full time so uh we did that in 15 we came over to Berkshire Hathaway in 15 so uh the rest is history as they say <laughs> yeah I think Rob being a teacher and having that education background really kind of kind of separates him he's he comes at real estate with um he's not a salesperson he's an educator and he really takes that approach to consult with his clients advise his clients and he's just really good at explaining things. Of course, he's patient. He really does have the heart of a teacher, but he takes all that. He's also unbelievable with like numbers and data and, and knowing the neighborhoods and just all the real stuff that real estate, the real estate agents do. But he really approaches it from like an education background. So mm -hmm. that's how uh, he kind of. No stinky sales it. breath here. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah education me. There are so many questions from our our, our buyers and our sellers. And it's really nice to be able to give them the roadmap uh, 
to a successful transaction. Right. Awesome. Right. So, okay. So now you're, so now, you know, that's a great story. And, and I, and I know that you guys you got uh, Danny's background. What's that? We, we have to give you Danny's background. Yeah. Well, that's so, what I was going next. Let's, is not, no, no. not just the pretty blonde. She's got an Ivy league uh, degree from Columbia and nice. um, her, her, her background is a little bit of um, office.com. Okay. Yeah, She's like, I, let me take care of this. You. Yeah. Yeah, Danny, take over, please. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in on this one. So what Rob was saying, I have a master's degree in organizational psychology. So I love working with people. I always wanted to be in a field where I could work with people and really use that with real estate now, actually, business psychology. But in the early 2000s, right around the time that we met, just before I met, I had got sort of promoted out of HR into a role in marketing. And it's kind of an interesting story because it was um, my job was to be a community manager, meaning I was tasked with creating online community, getting people to talk online. And this was before Facebook. This was before it was a thing. Social media wasn't really a thing. So it was early 2000s. And um, I worked for office.com, which was geared toward it was a website geared towards small and medium sized businesses, how to run your business. So I was tasked with how do you get people to connect online? Isn't that crazy? Crazy, right? Two so 2000, the fa fa Facebook, social media wasn't really a thing. And there was no such thing as a community manager. They're basically like, well, Danny's smart. She can figure this out. Let's, let's see what <laughs> That's literally what happened. So I spent weeks like studying the internet. I'm at home with my dial-up modem. I'm definitely aging myself here. Wow. So what do we do? How do we do this? And I discovered a website called hotornot.com. I don't know if you remember this. It's the, it's basically- Oh, I've never heard of it. <laughs> Matt, apparently Matt.com had been invented, but this was a, it was the early beginnings. Basically the way it works is you upload a photo and people on the internet rate you one to 10, are you hot or not? You get to see what other people think of the picture and then you click next. It was very, it went viral. It's just like a, it was so addictive. And so what I figured out from that was that people really like to give their opinions online people and people thrive on likes and want to know what people think. So I kind of took that and applied it to our website and I created an area where at the time it was kind of new. People were just having their own business webpage. If you had a small mom and pop shop. Yeah, I'll give you this reference. That's 22 years ago. Yeah, what are we doing today? Years ago. <laughs> so, if you um, had your mom and pop shop, you would post online. So we created an area where you could give feedback. So the reason I love this story is because I'm just so passionate about social media. It was really like it took off. People still today like to give their opinions online. They like to get likes online and they like to connect. So really, um, you could tell I'm passionate about it. I can talk about social media all day. But if you Google at hotornot.com, you can see that this is what or you remember face mash this is what mark zuckerberg based his you know That's thing on start. that was his start and so it's kind of like the unsung hero of the beginning of internet but you could hear basically so how i bring it in today is i'm um, clearly i stumbled into this role in marketing but i really am passionate about marketing and social media and even today like we're all guilty of advertising on social media but really it's social media is for connecting with people Right. interacting and being social and being genuine. So we're guilty of it. We're trying to be a little bit more public and share more about us going forward and just being real. That's our tagline, not just realtors, real people. And that's what we're going to continue to do with our marketing and, and stuff. So that was kind of my background, how I got into it. And then of course, when I joined Rob, I, I just gravitated toward the marketing side. I'm a certified luxury home marketer and I basically focus on our, um, you know, marketing properties as well. So right. that's kind of how I stumbled into this role. And again, just joined Rob when he needed some help. I did not think I was going to be a realtor. <laughs> Hook him in. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it does explain how you put up with him with a degree in psychology. That's very helpful. I understand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and which leads me to my next question. But but before we do that, I, I, I just want to say your last marketing you did of the pictures of you guys uh, at your home and, and, the, and the whole theme behind that was incredibly awesome. So great job, Danny. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, so that's kind of, that's kind of the breakdown of, and you know, Danny explained kind of Rob what she does. Well, how about you? What, what's your job on the team? 
So I'm, a, I'm the front man. I'm the face guy. So I am working with the buyers and the sellers. I'm first line of communication. So anyone that needs us usually goes through me. They call me up. I'm setting up uh, schedule our, our buyer showings. I am running the comps. I'm the numbers guy. So I am doing uh, the comparables so we know what to come out at price wise to list. And then, exa- and then on the other side, on the buy side, what we're going to make our offers at. And um, so I think my, my teaching background, the patience, the education that really helps with our buyers. Um, Danny's detail oriented. She makes everything look better. She's our online communications person. She makes our print look good. All of our listings look good. I am working day to day with our buyers and our sellers and uh, negotiating. Awesome. Awesome. Danny, anything else you want to add to that, to, to the breakdown? I was going to say, like, it, it really is a benefit when he was, like, I can't believe that one person can do all these things because it really, having two people, it allows us to focus on what we enjoy most and what we're good at. I listen to him all day. He's really so hands-on with our, with our clients. He's, he's talking to them and I hear how he is so patient with them and what a strong negotiator is. I listen to him all day long. He, he handles so much. I'm amazed at how many details he keeps track of. He never lets anything fall through the cracks and he just gets to work with our clients super hands on. And I get to do the fun okay, stuff. I, I, have, <laughs> I get I, to post I, pictures. <laughs> I, I was going to say, Danny, so when you used Rob's headshot for the guinea pig on hot.com, what number, <laughs> what number did he come out at? Was on the scale of one to 10? It's always a 10. Oh, he's a 10. After, 20, after 24 years, Rob, still a 10. I have very high standards. Very high standards, very detail-oriented. <laughs> okay. All right. I love it. <laughs> well, 24 years, and I'm around you guys all the time. I know you guys. You guys get along wonderfully. It's been great. You guys have incredibly kids, great kids, wonderful dog, Ringo. Love that dog. <laughs> I've met the dog. I haven't met the kids yet, but I've met the dog. But I feel like I know the kids too because I see them on social media. Yeah, excellent. So, um, any other questions for us? Yeah, two. So, so you guys kind of go. I love that that tag. Two for the price of one. So, when you're at a presentation, how do you present that? Do you how do you bring up the team concept and that you guys are married and working together? Right at the listing presentation. Yeah. Well, we yeah. let people know up front. We kind of make it intentionally. Rob is their point person. So we're, there's no confusion. Everything goes through Rob and he's hands on. But I'm always behind the scenes with every client, knowing what's going on. And our clients get kind of two perspectives on everything we do. They get the double the experience, double the knowledge behind the scenes, even though they're technically working with Rob. And he's, of course, doing all the important stuff, the negotiating, the contracts, all that stuff. But they um, they're getting double the double the everything. Our skill set is like yin so and yang. Different. We're so comfortable. Can you tell we're opposites? Different angles. <laughs> no. They really they get, they get the benefit of our skill set and our experience and our work ethic, and it's fun. You know, it's it's great to be able to work with your spouse um, and and get those wins and success stories and. I don't, you know, she genuinely cares when we're talking about our clients because she knows them. She has input. So I'm not boring her, I hope. No, no. Yeah. Like when we, yeah, that's definitely a pitfall. We talk about it all the time, but you get two people that genuinely care about the clients as opposed to maybe if you're a spouse and you go home and talk about work and they don't know the person or they don't understand, you know, when we talk about it, it's genuinely interesting Mm -hmm. and we genuinely care and we love to celebrate with our clients. So that's always fun that, you know, we get to know our clients, we take them out and then we do, you know, it's kind of a together thing. We definitely celebrate our clients. You teach them how to make beer for the AFC NFC championship weekend from the bar parties that's good that's a great idea you should tell them about that one yeah so i brew beer i've been doing it for like 20 plus years and a sports fan and so we put together a couple of client parties per year um one of them's a beer party so i make the beer in front of them we drink beer that i previously made that day we have the afc championship game on the nfc championship game on and then they get to uh give us input on a name, the beer, the beer, and then we pick the winner with the best name, and then we make a label for the, each beer that we make, 
and we send it out and uh, drop some bottles off to everyone. That's one of our parties. Yeah. That's, one of your, that's, one, that's one of your uh, uh, farm parties, right? Because it's right in your neighborhood. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people in our community come, a lot of our past clients, a lot of our friends. Uh, this past October. We we, yeah, we couldn't do it this year because of logistics. So not every year, but we've done we it were, many times. She was but away. we've added um, a fall client appreciation. Party yeah, so, so she, that's another beer theme. <laughs> Rocktober Fest or, you know, we usually have something going on. We don't know what we're doing this uh, October. So we're going to have to figure that one out. But we uh, top last year's we're going to have to top last year's great party. And it's yeah. on YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check it out. We have you know, uh, little clips of our past client parties. Awesome. I love it. So give it, so, you know, it's a, such a great story because you guys both come out of different backgrounds and both highly educated out of different backgrounds. And then Rob kind of takes off, does a few deals, and then you jump in, get your license. Now you've come together and you guys are one of the top teams always. I think the last time I checked, you were number, well, I can't tell you because the, the awards are coming up, but close to the top 10. <laughs> last year, do you remember what year you fit, what number you finished? Wasn't it 12? I think it was 12. Eight. We're eight. We're, eight. Eight. we're consistently in the top five in the Scottsdale office. Right. In the Scottsdale office. In all of we're Arizona. Four. Yeah. Right. So you're so you're in the top five for the Arizona for the Scottsdale office, and you're always close to, if not in the top ten, for the whole company. All right. So that's quite an accomplishment because we have some really, really good teams too. So we have so my question is, so now so you've come together and you've done that. You mentioned how you work with your clients and your client appreciation. Give me some other tidbits of how you do business at that level. Um, we stay, I would say that we, we take on just the right amount of clients. So we give them all, we make sure the number one thing is the client experience. So we make sure Rob is hands on, even though, you know, we could technically pass stuff off. He stays very active in the client's deal. He's always knows what's going on. He takes on so many. I'm always amazed at how much he does. He never lets anything fall through the cracks, but yet we constantly are focusing on meeting new people and attracting new clients. Hopefully we focus very much on getting referrals, right? We love referrals and yeah. they keep rolling in because I, hopefully we're doing a good job. So we love yeah. getting the referrals and we just, they more organize them more like than this. half our business is repeat clients because we like to think we did such a nice job the first time and referrals because our referral partners, whether they're friends, family, professionals, know that we're doing a great job e each time. So they're not afraid to refer us. So, yeah, I mean, it's like hats off to everyone that does refer us. And then we're meeting people out and about, you know, open houses and all over the place. So, yeah, it's a little bit about what we do. Absolutely. That, that's the key right there. Because if you can do a great job and you can uh, get a repeat referral business, and if you do a great job, it's easy to ask them for referrals too, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing is just, I'm always amazed at how consistent Rob is. He shows up every day. He does the work. He's always taking care of deals. He's an He answers his phone, which apparently not everyone does. He's always there for his clients and just shows up every day and just... We're just the best we can do is just be our best selves each and every yeah, day. Yeah, we, we enjoy what we do. So, you know, if you're working a couple hours each day, even on Saturday and Sunday, it's not a big deal to us. You right. know, uh, yeah, it's what we well, do. Well, he's, he's got that he's got that northeast uh, mentality, uh, Danny, you know, so it says he gets it done. Unfortunately, he's a little too far south. So he's a giant yeah. Yankees fan. You know, he's not a Red Sox fan or a Celtics fan, but, but no, that's, that's OK, too. That's OK. I don't know that. But I think that East Coast, I think people move a little quicker there. And I think if you can scale it down here where you guys are, it's very helpful because, you know, I think that um, that get it done. Like, let's face it, you've done things that other people haven't done, like calling expires, calling all expires, calling for sale by owners, calling around your listings and sales. Right. So tell them a little yeah. about that, that process, too. I, I got on the phone right away. I love the phone. It's um, just uh, just really, um, what would I say? Very efficient. You know, you're not, uh, you're not running around, you don't have appointments. It's just, you're calling people. It's real easy. So it's natural for me to call everyone I know and check in with everyone. So the phone to me more than like a, um, a door knock is something that I really thrive with. And then open houses, I really like to support our sellers by, by sitting open houses the benefit for the sellers is, you know, if someone comes in without a realtor, their realtor's on vacation or they're busy and they just want to see the house, they may fall in love with the house 
and then they'll go back and they'll write an offer with a realtor. But if there's someone that comes in that doesn't have a realtor, that benefits me and I could sell the house uh, and, and for the, you know, get the job done for my listing. So uh, not afraid of open houses, not afraid to stay busy on the phone. And that's, I, I think, where it starts. Yeah, absolutely. Get out there and get it done. Okay. All right. So give them, so let's say, let's say that um, there's a husband and wife uh, out there thinking about teaming up together. You know, probably what would be uh, some of the pointers that you would tell them uh, other than the obvious, you know, you got to like each other. <laughs> <laughs> Don't carry an armed weapon at any time. You know, other than the obvious ones, give them some tidbits as to like what, you know, what they should be thinking yeah. about. Uh, definitely patience with your spouse or partner. Uh, it takes, it took us like a year to figure out and stay out of each other's ways. So it took us a good year to figure out you're going to do the marketing. I'm going to be doing the, uh, the buyers and the sellers, uh, the running the numbers. So it does take a little massaging to get used to it. Uh, what's your number two? No, that's it. Yeah, just um, I do think it works better when we stay out of each other's way. But having a, a system where you can communicate efficiently, but not spend all day talking to each other like we we can't we don't have that kind of time. So we have Efficient to get things done, is. you know, yeah. figure out what's going on for the week and, and a weekly meeting, you know, you just want to plan stuff you want a weekly yeah, a little meeting planning as well, is important, so. but we shouldn't really be talking to each other all day because he's <laughs> his clients. And you're going to stay with night. You can talk to him then. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the, the, the other great thing is, is, you know, when you divide up the tasks, like, you know, you're the behind the scenes, you do the marketing, you know, you have a, a really high vested interest in it because it's you, right? Same with Rob when he's out doing listing appointments. So that's one of the great things about it is you have two people with the same high vested interest to make sure everything comes out professional, looks good, functions well, right? hundred percent. Right. We have double the, double the everything. Um, and then also I think we have, um, Ooh, did I just forget what I was going to say? <laughs> I think yes, I, you did. I think I did. Um, what were we just talking about? <laughs> I forgot. Giving advice to people working with their spouse. Oh, I was going to say the benefit is, um, is being able to cover for each other. Right. So if there's a day where I can't do something or he he needs me to cover, we we're so involved that we can slip into each other's roles if we have to. Right. Right. We can do I do open houses and you know sometimes I take out buyers, but yeah, fully licensed. You know, like she I can, can, she can do, do everything, all, but, but I don't have to, and he can to. cover. The good thing about my job is it's not you know I'm not on call. There's never a marketing emergency, so I have a little more flexibility. But we can cover each other. And that's definitely something to think about how you can support each other. Right. Um, you know, if you're working with your spouse, being able to, you know, balance each other and support each other is really a good thing to think about. Just like you would in any marriage, you just kind of transition right. how you treat your marriage into the same level of respect and care into your right. business. Spouses selling houses. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's We're real, not just realtors, real people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Any final thoughts you want to leave these wonderful people? I really appreciate you taking your time out today, especially on Valentine's Day. It was awesome. Perfect, perfect scenario. Great, great idea, Danny. Yeah. I mean, for us to do this on Valentine's Day, right? So um, any final words you want to leave these lovely people? We're still arguing over who's still, So, yeah, we, we are arguing about credit on that one. So, uh <laughs> Oh, you are? Okay. Well, there's a word for that. It's called marriage. It's okay. <laughs> no, we just want to thank you for the opportunity. You've been great. We we love, you know, just being on your, you know, paying attention to your podcast and all the education that you give everyone and just when we can share and give back. We've been doing this so long that we feel like we have something to say and share and we just appreciate the opportunity to be real people and yeah, kind of connect this, with you know connect with people this is our second uh this interview third, with you actually third it's our th we did an in-person one oh, yeah uh, no, okay. yeah so oh, it's uh, our yeah. second Facebook yeah class. glad we can jump on i i, I do i really I just appreciate it we share with each other and collaborate so uh you yeah. know anyone out there we are uh we're there for you if you need anything give us a call Anyone wants to talk about working with your spouse? Or a realtor. Or a realtor. I, I, you know, I, I appreciate everything you say, and it's a pleasure 
working with you guys too. I don't, and I don't know, Danny, if Rob told you this, but the time you guys, you're talking about when you spoke at Success Series about four years ago, I would say, one guy, somebody, somebody from another company came to me, right? Rob probably remembers what I'm going to say, but he goes, hey, um, is this where the Cinco de Mayo uh, interview is going to be? He thought your last name was Cinco de Mayo, not Matasinko. <laughs> I just had to share that one, Rob. Sorry. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Everybody else, we'll see you on Thursday. Woo! Well, again, you too. Happy Valentine's Day, lovebirds. No doubt. <laughs>